couch Dogs need the lessons Welcome back to yet another awesome guitar lesson here on Lickin' Riff, in which I'm going to help you transform your rhythm guitar from just simple strumming patterns to actual living, breathing music. We're going to take your rhythm guitar to the next level using hammer-ons and pull-offs in between strums, using sliding into chords, using uh, syncopation to change the chords creatively. Um, in this lesson, my goal is to give you enough tools so you can be creative with your rhythm guitar instead of just sticking to rhythm patterns, to strumming patterns, okay? But before we do, before we start, I wanna mention that this lesson is yet again sponsored by Skillshare because Skillshare love Lick and Riffers. They know that you're a quality audience and that's why they wanna give 500 more of you they have sponsored lessons before and they keep coming back because they wanna give 500 more of you free premium access to their platform for two months, two whole months of free premium access to all their video courses. Skillshare is a video course learning platform. They have a website, they have an app, and it's completely addictive. They have courses on anything from graphic design to typesetting to website design to finance to music production to video editing to painting to drawing. Anything you want to learn, they have it on Skillshare. Click the link below in the description. The first 500 people to do so, to click the link in the description, will get two months of free premium access to all their courses. That's tens of thousands of courses. Just go there and see for yourself. It's well worth your time. Click the link below in the description and go get your two full months of free access. Right, thank you Skillshare. So, um, what we're gonna do in this lesson is take rhythm guitar into the next level. Now, um, I'm just gonna be creative in this lesson and show you several ways you can play each concept because what I want you to take from this video is that rhythm guitar doesn't have to rely always on fixed patterns, okay? Rhythm guitar can be a creative thing. It actually should be a creative thing because you wanna express yourself on the instrument. You don't, you don't just wanna be a technical player. So in order to do that, for example, let's take a C chord. You can add hammer-ons and pull-offs in between strums to create a, a little solo in between. It's just a very simple example and then we're gonna complicate it so you can see where you can take it. So the simple example would be something like this. Okay, the more complex rhythm pattern you can create from this would be something like this. Okay, because you have to reverse your strums uh, between hammer-ons and pull-offs. So your focus has to change from the picking hand to the pulling off and hammering on hand, okay? The fretting hand. Um, so um, that's what I mean by being creative. So what I did the first time was something like this. Okay, this is again the simple example. Okay, we're gonna take it farther uh, into uh, whole chord territory. Okay, something like this. So put on a C chord and strum uh, down, up, down, and then hammer on the three on the second string. Okay, and then do the same thing, but pull it off. Okay, now if you need some time to get used to it, just do this exercise, just loop it around. Three strums, okay, down, up, down, and then a hammer on and a pull off. Okay, now my fingers keep playing the pull off to the zero as well. What I did was one hammer on to three, three pull off to one, one pull off to zero, and then hammer on back to one. So, okay, that's the solo. So, That's your first exercise. Now try to feel the dynamic, okay? Don't strum the whole set of strings. Try to strum uh, the bass note, the bass strings first and then the high strings, okay? Okay? Um, every, um, 
first beat of a bar, use a metronome if you need to. Every first beat is the bass strings, okay? Bass and then the pattern. Okay, and then on that last uh, strum, down strum, which lands on the first beat, you play the bass strings again. Okay, if this is too complicated for you, don't do it. Just play the pattern. Okay, until you're used to it, and then try to add the, the dynamics into it, the bass dynamics. Then, um, in order to create a more complex rhythm pattern out of it, play two strums and then hammer on and pull off, okay? And that will reverse your strumming pattern. Okay, you can stop your hand, but then it will hurt your dynamic. You need to keep moving your hand, like this. Okay, because it creates the right dynamic, okay? Because uh, you still have um, a down-up feel instead of okay, um, suffocated sort of sound. If you stop your hand, you don't feel the music. You, you're thinking about the hand. I want you to keep moving your hand. Okay, so it's down-up, hammer-on. Up, down, hammer on, uh, or pull off, okay, depending on where you are in the lick. Okay, so. Okay, that means that you keep moving your hand, you're strumming the air while hammering on and pulling off. That's the advanced part of this technique. Okay, you need to keep feeling the rhythm, you're not stopping your hand. This is where it gets a little bit difficult, okay? Because you need to stop thinking about the hand. If you, if you think about the hand, if you focus on the hand, okay, on the picking hand, you're gonna stop it. You need to feel the music, you need to focus on this hand, the fretting hand, the hammering on and pulling off hand in order to pull this off, okay? Trust me on this. If you focus on this hand, you're gonna stop it. You need to focus on this hand. You can add whatever you want into this. You can use the three on the E string as well. You can hammer on from zero to three. Okay, um, you can start playing around with this once you have it. But I wanna show you the, uh, the creative part of this, okay? Where you're free to do what you want. And you can only achieve that once you stop thinking about the strumming hand once you start feeling the rhythm, okay? So that's one method, okay? The really advanced part of this method is to hammer on whole chords and playing around with the notes in that chord, okay? And that requires dynamic. A minor, for example, you can pull off and hammer on all the notes in it, okay? So, okay, you can, do the zero and one on the second string, which we're all used to, but you can also do the two and zero on the third and fourth strings, the G and D string. Okay, you can keep that C note, you can keep the one on the second string and just pull off and hammer on the third and fourth strings. Okay, R rhythmically and randomly. Now this requires you to actually focus on the strings that you're soloing on, okay? You can't strum the whole chord all the time. And this requires, again, a focus on this hand. And again, this is the advanced variation. So unless you've done the previous exercises, this might be a little bit difficult, especially if you're not using a pick. Uh, you can, you, you should play this with a pick. I'm just used to strumming without a pick, okay? so. Okay. You can also play around with the whole chord. Okay. 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 You can do it randomly. Okay. Focus on each string. Okay. First. Okay. Just the second string. 
just the third, just the fourth. And after you're done with this, okay, okay, try randomizing. Okay, I took all the notes off and then I hammered on the whole chord. Okay, I did and then and then this. So none of my fingers were on the fretboard and then I put it back on. But you didn't get this. Okay, you didn't get an open set of strings. You still heard music. Okay? Why is that? Because I kept focusing on the right strings, okay? And that created sort of a G over, G over A feel or, um, or an A minor seven kind of feel, okay? It's hard to tell because each of us hears music differently, especially when the music starts getting complicated. Um, so the chord name doesn't matter, okay? So what I did slowly, Again, I don't want you to copy my playing. I want you to, because if you copy my playing, that defeats the purpose of you becoming creative with this technique. Okay, I picked, okay, the, I pulled off the one from the second string. I did two or three strums and then pulled off the two from the third, and then the two from the fourth, and then hammered on the whole chord. You can do it with any chord. You can hammer on the, the C chord afterwards. And go back to the previous exercise. You can hammer on E minor. You can hammer on E minor and create a dynamic change. Okay? Or G. Okay, you can hammer on out of nowhere. Okay, hammer on the chord without the bass note, without strumming it. Okay, and then strum it. Okay, because I picked okay, the middle strings, hammered on the bass, and then played it, and I got this. Okay, I got something like this. You see, it's all about breathing space. It's all about creativity. It's all about letting the music breathe and being free with your fingers. Now, I'm not going to talk about the D chord because we're all used to playing this. Okay, so I'm not going to talk about a D chord. Okay, the D chord is the only chord most of us are used to playing around with hammer-ons and pull-offs within the chord. So, okay, I want you to move from A minor to E minor. Okay, now comes the slide part, the next method. You can slide into a chord, okay? If you take a C chord, you can, you can slide it into D, you can slide it two frets up, but that's not what I'm talking about. Okay, I'm uh, sliding after I play the bass notes, okay? And then I strum the rest of the chord, and then I go back. But that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about this. Inside one chord. I'm talking about E minor turning into E minor at nine. Okay? So again, it's the same idea with this hand. So if you've done the previous exercises, you should be used to not thinking about it. Okay, so I'm playing the bass notes and then I'm strumming. And then I'm playing the bass notes again with an emphasis on the D string and I slide it into four, from two to four. So, okay, or I just play the D string. And I put the two back on the fifth string. Okay, and I play the rest of the chord. And then I go back from four to two on the D string. Okay. Um, in 
some ways, this is actually a simpler exercise than the previous ones, but um, it's technically more demanding because a slide needs to be emphasized. Okay, so... Okay. And um, once you get used to this, you can do it with, uh, with other chords. Even though um, the application for a slide in between strums is usually with chords. For example, if you're playing a barred chord. Okay, the, the slide would be a bass slide or... Okay, or a whole bar slide and then you add the fingers for the chord. Okay, you can okay you can slide the whole bar I'm playing uh, D minor and then E minor just on five and seven a minor shape and then I slide the whole bar from five to seven and I add the a minor shape afterwards so okay so that's that's another creative use for this okay once you're used to sliding in between strums you can slide anything. This is a C over G chord. It's um, it's G with one and two on strings two and four. Okay, so um, so it's C over G. The guitar is slightly out of tune. Okay, so you can just slide it. Um, the bass notes are three, five, six, eight, and ten. Okay, if you pay attention to the bass note, the whole chord moves along with it. Okay, you can, um, you can use the same two-strum pattern from the C chord exercise and just move the chord chromatically. Okay, and C, just, just, the tech, just as a technical exercise. Okay, now the next uh, thing and the final method I want to discuss is uh, syncopation. Okay, so um, if you have um, a chord change, okay, let's take D minor and okay, and let's turn it into a sort of a D minor major seven chord, uh, sort of an augmented chord, which is a D minor with two on the second string instead of three. It looks like A minor. Okay, just as an exercise. Now, again, you can use a slide. Okay, but I want, I want us to forget about the previous concept and think about a new concept, okay, which is this. Okay, just a normal rhythm pattern, right? Um, but if we add syncopation to it, it sounds like this. A lot more interesting, right? And you can do it with any song, with any chord change. You just change the chord on the last up strum before the next bar, okay? Okay, it was uh, one, two, three, and four, and 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 one. Okay, that was the rhythm, okay? Down, 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 up, down, up. One, two, three, and four, and one. Change the chord on that last end, and then you have a choice. You can play the one, okay? You can play the first beat, as a bass note or just, you know, a, a, a delicate strum, or you can let it go and not play it, okay? One, two, three, and four, and, 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 three, and four and. right? Or you can play it. One, two, three, and four, and 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 one, two. But the chord 
change happens on that last end. And that's a huge difference. Okay, it's called syncopation. With any chord, right? Okay, just the four chord song formula. C, G, A minor, F. You see, syncopation changes everything. That's normal. Okay, we've heard this a thousand times. A thousand, a, a, try a billion. Um, if you add syncopation, changes a little bit, makes it a little bit more special. Uh, a minor. You see, you change the chord on that last end, suddenly the music breathes. That's the magic of syncopation. You can hammer on chords. You can hammer on the A minor. You can hammer on any chord you want. You see, hammer on the chord, and I play the, the other strings to create a back and forth feel. You can hammer on the whole chord. Slide into the G. Back to the F. Okay, I'm just vibrating the chord to uh, try a different sound. Some of you might like it, some of you may not. You don't have to vibrate the chord, of course. Now you see? So those are um, some advanced methods that, that will transform your rhythm guitar playing. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this lesson. You guys and girls, click the link below in the description. The first 500 of you get free two months of premium access to all the courses. Um, it's, it's an incredible offer, go and grab it. So uh, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you the next lesson. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. There are hundreds, literally hundreds of lessons here, free for your uh, viewing and learning pleasure. Thank you very much for watching. Bye for now. Enjoy.